Polling data shows that the American people are fed up with the federal tax system. They're tired of spending so much time and money on its impossible complexity, and they resent all the loopholes and special exemptions. They don't believe everyone pays their fair share. And people in the middle class feel the rich can afford lawyers, accountants, and even lobbyists to reduce or eliminate their tax liability. The first American Revolution grew out of grassroots anger at taxation without representation. Grassroots movements are very powerful. Women's right to vote was a grassroots movement, one that took decades to be successful. Prohibition grew out of one grassroots movement, and the repeal of prohibition grew out of another. While the Berlin Wall did not fall in the United States, that grassroots movement was as much a victory for Americans as it was for Europeans under the boot of communism. When good people work together, grassroots movements change the world. A second American revolution is underway. Born of anger with taxation in spite of representation. At over 17,000 pages, today's federal tax code is broken. It cannot be reformed or fixed. The time has come for throwing out the whole thing and replacing it with something simple to follow, hard to avoid, and fair to all citizens, whether rich or poor, young or old, single or married. Something that taxes wealth rather than wages, puts more money into the average person's pocket, eliminates taxes on savings, and greatly accelerates the economy. Honest taxpayers spend hundreds of billions of dollars every year just trying to understand and comply with the tax code. And that's in addition to the taxes paid. The cost of compliance is a second tax. Even in Congress, a consensus acknowledges the current system is unworkable. In 1995, FairTax.org assembled a team of leading economists that span the ideological and political spectrum. They conducted extensive economic and market research in order to devise a simpler and more efficient tax system that would unleash the potential of the U.S. economy and help every working American create wealth. The result of this effort is H.R. 25 and its companion, S. 25, the Fair Tax Plan. The Fair Tax is a simple federal retail sales tax. Nationwide polling shows that when people have even a basic understanding of the fair tax, they overwhelmingly support it, regardless of political affiliation. They favor it over the current system and all other alternatives. The fair tax represents true tax reform. It replaces all federal taxes taken out of American paychecks, including all withholding, all payroll taxes like Social Security, and all federal self-employment taxes. It also repeals all estate and gift taxes, capital gains taxes, the alternative minimum tax, and corporate taxes. Unlike our current system, the fair tax is collected only once, whenever we choose to purchase new goods and retail services. The fair tax is easy to collect and hard to avoid. No loopholes, no exceptions, no special treatment for anyone. That's one reason the Americans we polled dubbed it the fair tax. Central to the plan's fairness is that the fair tax is progressive. To cover the taxes on basic necessities, the fair tax plan includes a family consumption allowance for each taxpayer. The family consumption allowance is a monthly check sent in advance to pay the tax on any purchases up to the federal poverty level, a prebate. Combining the prebate with the elimination of payroll taxes, the fair tax, in effect, untaxes the poor. As the number of people in the family rises, the amount of the prebate rises. The family consumption allowance is helpful to every American household, especially seniors and others on fixed incomes. As a sales tax, the fair tax taxes what we consume, not what we produce. It taxes what we take, not what we make. A wealthy person buying an expensive luxury car pays more taxes than someone buying an economy car. And since everyone takes home their whole paycheck, they're able to afford a better car. 
someone who buys a used car pays no federal tax. The fair tax taxes goods only one time, when they are originally purchased. All used goods are free of federal taxes. Since each of us has control over what we buy and when we buy it, we control how much tax we pay and when we pay it. The rich will still buy expensive luxury items and are taxed accordingly. But under the fair tax, the middle class is better able to manage their tax burden. The fair tax is designed to be revenue neutral. A tax of 23 cents out of every dollar spent provides dollar for dollar revenue replacement. This funds the government and Social Security at exactly the same level as the current system. Social Security and Medicare benefits remain unchanged under the fair tax. The only difference is that they are funded from a more stable revenue source with a far broader base. 23 cents from every retail dollar may sound high, but this simply reflects today's federal tax revenues. Under the fair tax, government spending is made visible for the first time. Indeed, when people see the tax on their retail receipts, they may begin to question government spending more seriously than we do today. Nevertheless, 23% is less than most people pay today in federal taxes. Consider that most people fall at least into the 15% income tax bracket, and all wage earners pay 7.65% in payroll taxes. That's almost 23% right there, without taking into account the 7.65% employer matching or any of the other federal taxes we must pay. It's worth repeating, under the fair tax, most people pay less in federal taxes than they do today. Those who spend at twice the poverty level, for example, pay a tax of only 11.5%, a much lower rate than the income and payroll taxes they pay today. Because the fair tax broadens the economic base for collection, generally less is required from each taxpayer in order to raise the same amount of money. And the fair tax doesn't require any of us to spend one more dime figuring out how much tax we owe. We would never have to file an income tax return again. April 15th would be just another spring day. Shifting the tax base from what people produce to what they consume begins to stimulate the economy almost immediately. Work by Harvard economist Dale Jorgensen shows a quick 9 to 13 percent increase in our gross domestic product. Boston University economist Lawrence Kotlikoff predicts a 7 to 14 percent increase. Even the National Retail Federation, which is opposed to the fair tax, shows the economy would be 1 to 5 percent larger. This growth is fueled by several factors that only happen under the fair tax. The first of these is the removal of hidden taxes. Over 20 percent of the cost of goods or services is actually hidden taxes passed on to consumers. Businesses today pay taxes on labor as well as on raw materials, capital equipment, and almost everything that goes into the manufacture of goods and creation of services. When all these taxes are removed, the cost of producing goods and services drops. Removal of compliance costs drops the cost of doing business even further. Some companies may be inclined to keep these savings themselves, but competition doesn't allow that to happen. As forward-thinking businesses reduce prices to increase market share, Competition drives prices down across the board. The fair tax allows exports to be sold tax-free, enabling American companies to export more competitively. Imported goods are taxed the same as domestically produced goods when they are sold here. American producers compete more effectively with foreign producers both at home and overseas. The U.S. becomes the most attractive country in the world for business and investment. International investors seeking lower taxes on their income relocate here. U.S. dollars now invested abroad flood home. During the 1980s, when marginal tax rates in the U.S. were reduced from 70% to 28%, roughly one-half trillion dollars of capital flowed into the country. Boston University economist Lawrence Kotlikoff 
estimates the fair tax raises the stock of U.S. capital by 13 percent in the near term and by as much as 83 percent over the long term. As capital flows into the U.S., interest rates drop, spurring the growth of the economy even faster. Businesses are able to increase productivity by investing more capital per worker, and increased productivity drives up real wages. Demand for workers increases, and jobs stop migrating overseas. New plants are built with American labor. Much of the equipment installed is American-made, and American workers employed in these plants produce increasing amounts of goods for both domestic and foreign markets. A major concern in any tax reform effort is what happens to mortgage interest deductions. The easy answer is that with no income tax, there's nothing to deduct from. But the fair tax has positive effects on residential real estate far beyond this narrow question. With raw materials and labor no longer taxed, home building costs are lowered, allowing competition to drive prices down. Likewise, mortgage interest rates are estimated to drop about 25 percent. So while homeowners cannot deduct interest, borrowers pay a much lower interest rate and have to borrow less because houses are less expensive. People are taking home their whole paychecks so they're able to save for a down payment much faster. They are also able to make a higher monthly payment. And with a fair tax, there are no estate taxes if a home is passed on to the next generation. And no capital gains taxes if it is sold. The same is true with a farm, ranch, or other family business. Another major concern is what happens to charitable contributions. Again, if there is no income tax, there are no tax deductions. However, research has shown that charitable contributions are more related to the health of the economy than to tax benefits. When people have more money, they give more money. Moreover, people give to charity based more on a desire to help than on the ability to take a deduction. Two of every three taxpayers do not itemize today, so they get no tax benefit whatsoever for their charitable contributions or for the home mortgage deduction. The IRS estimates uncollected taxes from non-filers and tax cheats amount to more than $345 billion a year. This does not include the underground economy of criminal activity. Non-compliance, no matter the reason, increases the tax burden for law-abiding citizens, especially wage earners and the middle class. By collecting taxes at the point of purchase, the fair tax substantially reduces the billions in uncollected taxes resulting from noncompliance, confusion, and honest mistakes. The fair tax reduces tax evasion and lowers the burden on law-abiding taxpayers. There are proposed alternatives to the fair tax. The so-called flat tax has its advocates, as does the value-added tax imposed in many other countries. The value-added tax increases hidden taxes, taxes which place the heaviest burden on those least able to afford them. The flat tax simply strips out the progressive aspect of the income tax. It does not free U.S. exports from tax or impose any tax burden on imported goods. And the flat tax can easily revert back into a graduated income tax. Neither of these alternatives is as simple to administer nor as efficient at funding the government as the fair tax. Neither eliminates our regressive payroll taxes or returns us to a constitutional prohibition of the income tax. To ensure that the income tax goes away and stays away, the fair tax plan includes the repeal of the 16th Amendment, a prohibition of any future income tax, and the end of the IRS. In fact, the fair tax is the only plan that explicitly prohibits the government from re-establishing any income tax. Besides simplifying the tax code, the fair tax expands home ownership, ignites new job creation, untaxes the poor, generates new sources of revenue for the overall economy, enhances global competitiveness, and fosters increased charitable giving. The fair tax is an idea whose time has come, 
Nearly 700,000 people have joined the fair tax grassroots movement. Their numbers are growing, and so are their voices. It's not just a you know, poor versus rich question. It's about uh, what's fair and uh, all the people that don't pay uh, basically their fair share of taxes. So, you know, it really strikes a chord. It uh, hits people where, you know, where they live. And uh, in America, it's all about being fair. I don't think our, our founding fathers really had that in mind when they said, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's control our constituents by, by giving them a tax on their income. Karl Marx said that. <laughs> I've always been one of those folks that looked at my paycheck and I looked in, at how much taxes were being withheld from my paycheck every month. Um, when I was raising three teenagers and we would file our taxes every year, I realized that everything I was working was paying our, our family tax debt. I mean, I was working exclusively to pay our family taxes. So, you know, when you think that I could have been a stay-at-home mom <laughs> um, and all the other families out there can do the same thing. I don't have enough money to move it offshore. I don't have enough money to protect it. I don't have enough money to hire big, expensive lawyers. I take it right on the chin with millions of other people. What I like about the fair tax is the fact that it not only eliminates payroll taxes, which is a benefit for us because we have a small trucking company, but I also like the fact that we won't have any payroll taxes or we won't have to pay as many taxes out for ourselves and we can increase pay to our drivers in exchange you know, because we won't have to pay out extra and they can have more benefits and we can have increased revenue at the same time. As someone who has a degree in government and I'm a student of history, I see what it might take is actually getting to the point where enough people believe in it that any congressman, any senator that is not in favor of it, of it just gets voted out of office. It, it, it may be that simple. If you call that a rebellion, I call people taking back the government. It's more in line with what the original Constitution was. It's an idea that unless you understand it, unless you can get your, your mind around it, you're, you're not going to buy into it. You're going to say, it doesn't make sense. That's the first answer I get from everybody I bring the idea up to. It's going to take education. It's going to take uh, people talking to their friends. It's going to take, you know, really a, a movement of people just sitting with people, talking to them, telling them, hey, this is what it's about and explaining it. And then it's going to take some attention from the media because the media has to has to catch on to, hey, we've got to educate people. You need mass media to educate people about this. Because if you educate people, it's a no-brainer. It's going to pass. To learn more about the Fair Tax, go to www.fairtax.org.